pleasure seeing you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank, thank you for having me be able to talk to you. Awesome. <laughs> I, I love the fact, very seriously, I'm looking at that beautiful smile on your face, the way mm -hmm. your hair is looking and everything. And that just sounds funny, realizing the hell that you went through, it's like, it's a miracle. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. It uh, is. Tell folks just a little bit about, I mean, all this stuff started when you were a kid. Yeah, at 12. Um, I was working, full-time job. I came from a family of you work hard, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I started working at 12, started hanging out with older people. I had low self-esteem issues. And so when I put that alcohol in me, boy, I thought I had arrived. You know, we always think we're better dancer and better looking when we... <laughs> Yeah, I so know that one. <laughs> yeah, I thought it made me fit in better uh, to the older crowd. And I have to tell you, I was an alcoholic by the time I was 13. Wow. After the first time I drank, I couldn't mm -hmm. wait to do it again. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that, that stuck with me for about 22 years of my life and took me to places that I could have never imagined. Yeah, I mean, just listening to your stories, I mean, you know, talking about the uh, physical and mental violence and, yes. you know, the still feeling like rocks in the back of your head and the other situation, you know, it, even as a guy, it's like, it, I couldn't imagine that type of stuff, nor, you know, just the fact that if I were in that situation at that such a young age, that would have been it. That's, yeah. you know, where I would have wound up. Talk a little bit about just, you know, what, the glow was that got into you to make you, like I said, now this, you know, very charming, happy, beautiful woman with a great smile. Oh, thank you. Um, you know what? I've always been bullheaded. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know what? I, I really have to say that it was God that was by my side, even through those years of all that. And I think he had the master plan, of course, and that he preserved my life through all of that. I think that he knew there was something in me that he could use. And, um, you know, at first, when I first uh, quit drinking, you know, I had no self-worth my whole life, honestly. And so, uh, you know, my journey started with, I had went to a detox in the inner city with 18 bunk beds and everybody in there was off the street and sick and, and we couldn't even brush our teeth or wash up. There were no hygiene products. And I used to bake. And I would take my baked goods to the flea market. Well, I started doing that when I got out of there. And I would buy those little hotel uh, bars of soap, 10 for a dollar, and little toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. And I'd take them the detox and give them to the people that were in there. And that was the first time. I did it at first because it made me feel good. Then I kept doing it because it just became the next right thing to do. And I'm telling you what, you know, I was a 36 year old woman somewhere in there. And for the first time in my life, I thought maybe there is something I'm good at. Maybe there is a purpose for my life. And that sounds silly giving out little bars of soap and toothpaste and toothbrushes to homeless people, but it sparked something in me. And that's when my ministry and what I do really came to light. Right. Because like you said, you know, it could have just been one of those things where, of course, you know, help yourself. I mean, that's what we all need to do is help ourselves first as far as getting, you know, into the right mindset. But then, yeah, she could have just, you know, then went on and led her own, or you, you led your own life. But you went on and started, like you said, helping people, getting property, getting them yeah. situated. And I mean, that's an even more beautiful thing. I mean, just knowing, thinking about all the people who you helped get off the street and whose lives you help save. Yes. Um, you know, I'm not a real estate mogul or anything <laughs> like that. And I, you know, currently we have 14 homes mm -hmm. and um, we're in the inner city and it was a very rough community, drug, drug riddled, crime riddled. Mm -hmm. And this is where I was planted. And, um, you know, I didn't plan to, I bought an old nursing home with my inheritance and uh, I had a small inheritance and I used that to buy the home. And then I sold my home to restore the home. And I really thought I was gonna help about 10 women 
in their recovery journey every year. And two months after I got the place, the dope man moved in next door. Nice. And I'm like, oh, we can't have a drug house next door to the recovery home. Right. And so uh, I claimed the dope man's house. And a year and a half later, we got that house. Uh-huh. And, uh, and it was a good thing because we were full. And the women just kept coming. Mm-hmm. Um, back then, there was 900 women going through inpatient treatment in our city with less than 30 safe beds for when they got out of treatment. People right. didn't want to be bothered. And so that's really what started it. And then I just started seeing all these homes in our community that were abandoned or being used for drug houses or for all the wrong reasons. And I thought, man, maybe I could get that house and, and do something. And after I got the first house, I figured out there's something called equity after you fix it up, right? <laughs> right, right. And so I used that equity to get the next house. And, you know, then women came that were pregnant and I couldn't accommodate the little babies. And so there was an abandoned apartment building not far and I started peeking in the windows and the neighbor said, lady, what are you doing? And I said, I need this building. <laughs> and uh, so it has went from that to the 14 homes now. And then we have... Uh, an administrative building, we have apart, apartment buildings, and I think we're up to 40 apartments right now wow. for families. Oh, that is great, my goodness. I couldn't have dreamed this up, I'm telling you what, I could have never imagined my life today, and, uh, but it's, it's amazing, it's yeah. just remarkable. Yeah, I mean, that, that has to be quite the thing, like you said, imagining from where it came and thinking, uh, and then looking now, and you've got a movie. Yeah. And... <laughs> Who would have thunk it, right? <laughs> right? Right. And then so many interesting, you know, people who you've helped out. I mean, like you said, the women, then the men as well, yes. and then the couples. Because I, I dare say, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a big Beatles fan. And one, yes, of, your, one of your group, your husband and wife, had their Beatles stuff, you know, showing them going, those are my guys. <laughs> Steve and Colleen, yes, I love them very much. <laughs> well, well, tell them yeah. that hi. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. He's a Grateful Dead guy, too. When he used to use my car, I would get in my car and Grateful Dead would be playing. I'm like, Steve, <laughs> <laughs> okay. don't change my yeah. channel. <laughs> But also, it looks like, like you said, you've got all this stuff going now. Just even looking at the spirit and the goal about you, I don't think it's over for you. What else do you foresee yourself doing in your group? You know, um, right now, we were able to get a strip mall. And the one thing we don't need in our community is any more vape shops or liquor stores or tattoo shops or what have you. And I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm just saying to revitalize, continue to revitalize our community, we need to have businesses for the needs of the people that we serve in our community. So we're in the process of rehabbing that right now. We're gonna put in viable businesses. We're gonna do a bakery and a cafe catering, a full service beauty salon, um, a laundromat. We're gonna, we've got some big plans. And so we opened a gym this last year. So, <laughs> It's <laughs> the transformation that has taken place in our community will blow your mind. But we're working on that. Also, we'll use those businesses for job training for our folks so they can continue on in their life and have jobs that really can provide for them and their family. But, um, you know, one of my other things is that I really would like our folks to become first time homeowners. And because they go through a beginner's house moderate house, and then they can eventually advance house and then the apartments. And so a lot of our families are restored here. So I would love our folks that we get in there, we remodel the places, and people can buy, uh, become first-time homeowners. And in, in the same sense of that, them having uh, roots in the community, but our community will thrive even more. And so, you know what, wherever God tells me to go, I'm going. <laughs> well, fantastic, Bobby Joe, and I got a funny feeling with everything you just said. I'm looking now forward to part two, the next documentary. Awesome! <laughs> All right, Bobby Joe, thank you so much for your time. Continued success. And thank you so much. On doing what you're doing. All right, honey. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye.